The second phyla of worms we're going to cover are nematodes. These are the round worms. Round worms are very abundant. They're one of the most diverse animals that are found on the planet. Most are very small and inconspicuous, and most of them are free living. However, there are some parasitic round worms. Their body arrangement is slender, cylindrical, hence round worms, and they're tapered at both ends. They have all three germ layers. They have bilateral symmetry. They are not segmented, and that would that's one of the differences between round worms and segmented worms is that round worms are not segmented. They also have a tube for the digestive tract that has an anus. So yay, we finally have an entrance and an exit, not just one. Remember that flat worms were asolomates? Well, round worms are pseudosolomates. That means that they're organisms that have a closed fluid containing cavity that acts as the skeleton to maintain body shape, to circulate nutrients, and to hold the major body organs. They also have a nerve ring with a dorsal and ventral nerve cord, which we saw those nerve cords before with flatworms. They also have longitudinal muscles. This allows them to move around. Um, however, respiration and circulation still take place by diffusion. All right, so here's a diagram of a round worm and there's a couple of things that I want to point out to you. First of all, no notice the dorsal nerve cord on the back and the ventral nerve cord on the front and this is a cross section. So if we were to slice the worm in half and then look down the tube, um, you also see that there's muscle fibers that lead this way and there's muscle fibers that lead that way and muscle fibers that lead this way and muscle fibers that lead this way and then there's also muscle fibers in here okay so you've got muscle all over the place they also have um, a cuticle and that cuticle is that outer exterior surface kind of like our epidermis that goes all the way around please know that that cuticle helps prevent digestion if it is a parasitic worm um, also want to point out to you what's labeled as vacuoles here these here these fluid filled areas here and you see them all over there's one there's one there's one these are what allow them to be pseudosolomates these are the fluid filled areas that act as a hydrostatic skeleton and allow them to move in addition to the muscles all right so we've come a couple notches evolutionarily you now we've got um, finally we have an anus so the digestive tube is complete we have roundworms are a uh, pseudosolomate, so they have that hydrostatic skeleton that allows for movement. It also allows for circulation of nutrients. But here we finally have no asexual reproduce, uh, reproduction. Um, they have separate sexes, male and female. So we'll start with the male. Um, the male has testes, which produce the sperm, um, a sperm duct for the sperm to move throughout the organism. And then they have a copulatory spicule, and that is what allows the sperm to leave the worm. The female has the ovary where the eggs are made, uh, a uterus where they mature, and a vulva here where the copulatory spicule can enter the female. And so ultimately roundworms are very much the same as flatworms, um, and you'll see they're also very similar to annelids, the segmented worms, which we'll cover next. They're this nice in-between. So hopefully what you learned before with flatworms, you can apply a lot of that here. And what you will learn next week with annelids, you can also apply to roundworms.